welcome it is prosper one way again and in this week lesson we're going to be looking at redox reaction last week i introduced you to redox reaction where we saw how we defined oxidation and reduction in terms of electron transfer electron loss or gain oxygen loss or gain and hydrogen loss or gain we saw that oxidation is loss of electron whereas reduction is gain of electron and in regards to oxygen we saw that oxidation is l gain of oxygen and loss of oxygen is reduction and lastly we saw loss of hydrogen as oxidation and gain of hydrogen as redu reduction so in this week's lo lesson we're going to be looking at identification and balancing of redox reaction how do we identify a redox reaction how is it different from any other kind of reaction so we're going to be seeing identification and then balancing of redox reaction as i said in our last week's topic on redox reaction that it is the most important and the my my most my favorite topics in chemistry because it looks unique and different from every other aspect of chemistry so let's dive in what are objectives for today um the first objective for today is you should be able to identify a redox reaction at the end of the lesson you should be able to identify a redox reaction next you should be able to write half equations for redox reactions so we're going to be looking at what half equations are um, do not be frightened they are really really not that bad and number three balance a redox reaction so just just three um, objectives and you will be done for the day firstly you should be able to identify a redox reaction Next, you should be able to write up equations for redox reactions. And lastly, you should be able to balance redox reactions. So let's dive in. So the first thing, how do I identify a redox reaction? How is it? How do I identify a redox reaction? Well, one thing you should know that redox reaction entails both an oxidation side and a reduction side. So you need to check out for if oxidation is happening or reduction is happening. And you know this is characterized by loss or gain of electrons um, depicted in the form of um, changing oxidation number and when you see a chemical species changing from one oxidation number to another the tendency is that there is also another species changing from one oxidation number to another remember in our last topic we, we discussed that redox, um, reduction and oxidation are complementary processes because if one species is losing whether electron oxygen or hydrogen there should be another species that is gaining that entities so let's look at a chemical equation and let us identify it's a redox reaction all right in this case just looking at it ordinarily for as a student you would not be able to identify if it's a redox reaction but um, for those that actually understand the oxidation states of the various elements in this equation you'll be able to identify easily if um, any of this chemical species has either lost or gained electron well let us consider it potassium for those that understand right of chemical equation if you don't understand that topic well then you need to go back Combined state, potassium with combined state has a fixed oxidation state of plus one, oxidation number of plus one. So in this case, potassium is plus one, and in this case also it is plus one. Remember that it's not characteri characterized by this. For those that think that this determines oxidation number, please go back to the topic of topic writing of chemical equation and chemical formulas and understand how it works. But in this case, we see iodine with an oxidation number of minus one going from minus one to an oxidation state of zero. So this tells us that iodine has changed its oxidation state. So that is that is even a key that tells us that this is a redox because if iodine is changing the oxidation state, it tells you that there's another species that's also changing its oxidation state. So let us, in that case, ion two is changing from an oxidation state of plus three an oxygen state of plus two while sulfate remains the same so there are two species in this chemical reaction that's changing state iodine and ion so for chemical for redox reaction what we do is we single out these species that are changing oxygen state and leave out the rest so we'll write it ionically 
ionically this is what it's going to look like iodine is going from minus one to zero and and if it's going from minus one to zero what does that mean it means that it is oxidation because it's loss of oxy of, of electron now to understand this to better understand this you need to use your number line now if a particular chemical species changing oxidation state moving towards the positive side of the number line it is oxidation whereas if a chemical species changing its oxidation state and moving towards the negative side of the number line it is reduction for instance iodine is going from minus one negative side moving towards the positive side of the number line it means it's oxidation while ion on the other hand is going from plus 3 moving towards the negative side so it is reduction so this is how we write we present chemical equation that are redox actually redox reactions so we represent them using their ions ions that has undergone a change of state <coughs> All right, so let's write half equations. How do we write half equations? For instance, let's consider the chemical equation that we have on the screen. This chemical equation, notice that we have singled out the species that are undergoing reduction and oxidation, just like I showed you in the previous slide. Now, how do you write chemical equation and um, half equation? To write the half equation, you need to identify the oxidation half and the reduction half. That's what it just means to write half equation. You take the overall redox reaction and write down the oxidation half and the reduction half. So, since ox copper is going from an oxidation state of zero to oxidation state of plus two, it means it is moving towards the positive side. Zero on the number line going towards plus two. It is moving towards the positive side of the number line. That means it is oxidation. Now for reduction on the other hand, um, silver ion is going from an oxidation state of plus one to zero. It's moving towards the negative side of the number line. This tells us that it is reduction. So let's proceed. How do I go about balancing an equation? Now, for this aspect, to go about balancing an equation, you will need to understand certain rules. There are rules to balance of redox reaction. You have about seven of them, but believe me, with constant practice, you don't have to memorize this. With constant practice, you will not have to memorize this. But for now, I want you to jot down these rules, rules in balancing of redox reaction. The first of this rule is you should write the half equation which you've been taught now generally if you look at this aspect you're told that for each equation you only just need to add hyd water first hydrogen ion or electron it's not a must for all redox reaction but these are all you could add to a redox reaction so the first aspect is to write the half equations so the next aspect is use balance electrons in the electron equations other than oxygen and hydrogen you balance electrons in the equation other than hyd oxygen and hydrogen what this means is elements so we balance elements in the equation other than oxygen and hydrogen what this means is you look at the elements just like a normal equation a normal chemical reaction you look at the elements involved and see if they are balanced on both sides let's say you have chromium two chromium on one side you need to make it two on the other side so that's what it means. So other than oxygen and hydrogen, you leave out oxygen and hydrogen. So number two is you balance the oxygen atoms by adding water. Now, for instance, we have an um, what oxygen on one side, whether the product or the reactor side. Now, to balance this, you need to add water to it. So you add water to the side that has less oxygen. For instance, you have one oxygen on the product side. You need to add the same amount of water on the reactant side so you add one water on the reactant side or if you have it one oxygen on the reactant side and you need to balance it you add one water on the product side so number four number four came up very straight um, earlier so you balance hydrogen atoms by hydro adding hydrogen ion now what this means is the same way we talked about oxygen 
we're adding water to balance oxygen hydrogen ion is also balanced by adding hydrogen ion and the fifth one is you add up the charges on each side let's say you have uh, the, the charges you consider the charges i think i would better explain this using a real situation that's a real a redox equation it's better to explain this but let me briefly talk about it let's say you have um, 2 plus 2, the total charge on the reactant side is plus 2 and the total charge on the product side is plus 7, you see, they are not balanced. So we need to make it a situation where we balance out, where the charges are equal by adding electron. Let's consider electron to be subtraction. So if you have 2 on one side and plus 7 on the other side, plus 2 and plus 7, well, and in what aspect or what side of the equation would you subtract? Of course, we'll subtract on the seven side. So how many would you subtract? You subtract five to make it two plus two on the other side. Hold on. So you have two on one side, seven on the other side. What side would you subtract? You subtract from the seven side so that you can get two. So that subtraction, the subtraction, signifies electrons so in other words you add five electrons on the seven side to give you two well we'll explain that further and then lastly the elect the the electron on each side must be made equal if they are not equal they must be multiplied like simultaneously at the end of the day you put the two half equation together like this and then you multiply to make sure that the electrons on both sides is is made equal now in the first in number five you're only dealing with one each equation making them equal the charges are equal but on the in from the step number six you are looking at the two reactions the two half equations are making them equal we'll look at that in the next example coming up and lastly the half equations are added together cancelling out electrons from one balanced equation common terms should also be cancelled. For instance, you have electrons on both sides, now they have been made equal, and you have water on both sides, and you have things that you add, these things that you have added, have water, hydrogen, and electron. If they are on both sides, you should cancel out excesses. So, we'll look at that in examples. Now, let us balance an equation. That's what we've been doing all this for. It is time to balance an equation. Quite simple. Look at this one. We have this going to this. So this is what we're going to be balancing. So solution. Let's look at the steps. Do you remember the step? The first step is to write the half equation. So step number one, we're looking at oxidation half and reduction half. So ion is the oxidation half. If you want to follow up, you can pause the video at any point and carefully look at reasons why one it is the oxidation half and why copper is the reduction half. So the next step is you cancel out, so you balance out um, other elements other than oxygen and hydrogen. So we notice here that ion is one and ion here is one also, so there is no need to balance it out it is one one and in the case of copper we have one copper and one copper so forget about the ions please forget about the 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 charges they carry we're looking at, at the element how many of the elements do you find on either side of the equation so we don't need to do anything on that the next aspect is we balance out water we balance out water by uh, um, oxygen by adding high and um, water so we don't have oxygen and the next step also is that we balance out hydrogen by adding hydrogen ion we also don't have hydrogen on its either side so but i skipped out that step so that was that's that was just a slight mistake on on my side so i think i made both of them step three <laughs> all right i made both of them step three so Let's just assume that step three is balancing out water and hydrogen. It's different from the rules I gave to you, but it's just slightly different. Just a shift, but work with the rules I gave to you. So number four, which we're assuming to be number five. 
So balance the electrons in the equations in the equation. So what happens is look at this. We have plus one. We have plus one and we have copper here, copper solid. So plus one here and plus one and zero. Copper is zero in this case. So how do we subtract? Where do you subtract? We subtract from minus from plus one to get zero. So we add one electron to that side. I repeat. Remember what I described? We have plus one on this side and we have zero on this side. So what do we do? We add, we subtract from one side. We're subtracting from the positive side. So we add an electron to that side. So it's as simple as that. That's for the first one. And for the second one, we have zero and plus three. So we subtract three. In other words, we are adding three electrons to that side to give us zero. So it's equal. Moving on to the next step. The next step we'll have to do with um, making sure they are both equal. As I said, putting them simultaneously and balancing out the, the electrons. Note that this electron is three here and one electron. So we want to make them equal. How do we make them equal? Remember your simultaneous equation. So you multiply this side by three and multiply this side by one. This is not always the case. Just work with your simultaneous equation that which you've learned. So the three on this side multiplies the whole of this equation and the one on this side, one electron multiplies the whole of this equation. So what will be our result? Our result is that it will become three copper, three electron, three, three copper ion, three electron and three copper as a solid. So we have this happening, multiplying all two and then we have this remaining the same. So we'll move on to the next step. The next step is adding the equations. So when we add the equation, what we have, so this is like step seven from our the rules I gave to you. It is step seven. So we we'll add the equations. I modified that steps, those steps, and that's why I have something different. So we add the add the equations together. Look at it. It's just coming down here. Copper. We add copper ion. Okay. We add copper. The whole of the reactant side of the first equation and then we add the reactant side of the second equation having it here and we add the product side of the first equation and the product side of the the next equation and lastly which is the last step we cancel out the electrons are cancelled out how this is it so we're cancelling out the electrons the electrons in this is equal we have three electrons here and we have two electrons here so we cancel it out to have our balanced chemical equation. Woo, that was that was that was intense. So what do we do? Now, if you don't understand these steps, all you need to do is to pause the video at this point. I could wait for you. So you pause the video at this point and go to the steps again. So you go to it one after the other. Now, the reason I love this aspect is it makes you look like a mad scientist writing these whole things. This whole steps and a lot of electrons. It just makes you look unique. <laughs> I love looking unique. I know you love being unique too. So in this case, learn this redox balance of redox equation. Now this is the simplest aspect. In our lessons, lessons coming up as of um, the next video, you're going to be seeing much complex. Remember that we're skipping a lot of step, step two, step three, even step four. I made step five my step four in this case. So even step five. And you're going to see a more complex equation but for this video this is an introduction a preliminary to what we're going to be doing so let's advance so what do we do you try out this equation for yourself a very very simple one just like the one we saw is it the same no it's not it is so similar really really similar so you've tried it out i'm giving you something similar so you don't have to so you could use that as an example use our example to solve this and I believe you can do it. So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for sticking with me. Remember, if you have any question, do not forget our Zoom class is on Thursday by 11 o'clock. Um, I will get back to you with the code, but the code remains the same for those that are wondering what are the the code and the password is to the zoom class it remains the same but as for the timing the exact timing i'm going to get back to you in the google classroom or to your whatsapp 
platform. And if you have assignments yet to be done in the Google Classroom, please ensure to do so as we enable you to keep track of your progress. If I will need to redo certain video or revisit certain topics. If you have classwork yet to be done, please I implore you to do so. For our Zoom class, make sure you're in the Zoom class so we can explain further on what we've discussed so far. Do have a nice day and remember stay safe, wash your hands and observe social distancing. Thank you very much.